Hello YouTube gang and welcome to another episode of Design Direction. I'm feeling a lot more full of energy and uh, yeah, the, obviously the last time we touched base is, um, yeah, I was coming to the end of the Moon Project, the Moon Ultra Project and uh, you know, maybe some of you guys have seen it. Um, I released it a couple of weeks, it's still ongoing project, I'm still you know, creating some really cool stuff, still got some other really interesting things to do on that project but I was right at the end of my tether on that and uh, I was kind of losing a lot of um, a lot of patience but it's out it's live it's looking great and that really kind of inspired me to do this tutorial because this was a t t t uh, this was a project that I worked on that really touched across um, CSS breakpoints and really being able to expand on what we currently have inside of webflow currently we only have uh, I think three or four different breakpoints inside of webflow it's a little bit limiting, you know, um, and it'd be nice to understand the process that I went through to get me to be able to create that design working across all different, you know, devices, breakpoints, etc., etc. So hopefully what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to show you my workflow and how I, how I went about it, what I did, what I looked for, and how we can work this in. Now, obviously, you do have to have some knowledge in CSS, but I wouldn't say it's like you have to. I think why I'm going to show you is it's kind of just making sure you know where you are, copying certain things, changing certain things, and you know we can pretty much get the same results. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to waste any more time. Obviously, guys, don't forget to like that video and hit that subscribe button, and let's rock and roll. Let's get straight into it. CSS breakpoints. Here we go. So moving into CSS breakpoints now. Before we start, there's a there's a few things that I kind of want to explain how I do things. Now, a lot of people will test um, their breakpoints inside of inside of Google Google Chrome. So I see this is a is a bit of a bit of a bad thing to do. So if we go to the Moon. Ultra website that I did, uh, Moon Ultra. Uh, I'll just do. I'll just do the Webflow link. So, a lot of people when they go in to do to, to testing across breakpoints, they would go in, they'd go to inspect, um, they'd obviously change the device, and then they would do it through this. Now, for me, this is this is okay. You can kind of do a little bit of general testing and bugging and debugging but this is the one thing that is so and so so important make sure that you get on the device get your phone out is my phone get your phone out and 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 open it up and 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 look at everything that you're doing and, and see how it's actually on the device now when i tested the moon ultra site I tested this on a 27 inch iMac. I tested it on a 15 inch MacBook Pro. I tested it on a 13 inch MacBook Pro. I tested it on two different tablets. I tested it across four different phones. Now, the reason why I did this is because when you've actually got the device and the way that the device renders, um, it's not the same as it is when it sits inside of Google Chrome. And you can really get a feel, not just for, um, how it's working and if there's any issues you can get a sense of the flow and the spacing and whether you need to change things or bring things up or you know really really fine tune it because at the end of the day no one's going to view your mobile site on chrome on chrome like this so why aren't you going into your devices and testing them really on your devices really really getting into the details you know ask your mum ask your dad well, ask whoever's got another phone or a different device just test it have a little look see if there's anything wrong with it see if it looks as good as it does on an iphone does it does to an android you know these are the kind of things that i think is really important to making sure that design is great so obviously this would be the you know the first way that we would go in and we'd see how it worked on mobile you know, and we're pretty much covered inside of Webflow, so that's not too much of an issue. Now, the the thing that we're going to be looking at is is media queries. So, I yeah, I think you know probably some of you guys would probably know CSS Tricks. Um, they do some really good resources. Check them out. They've got lots of good stuff on here. But 
Um, what they've supplied, <laughs> this is, you know, to an, you know, a kind of extensive plethora of different CSS breakpoints, but you've got all of these different breakpoints. And, you know, if you read it, it's kind of saying in between this width and this width, it's telling you the, the, the pixel ratio. Um, and as you can see, iPhone 4, 4S, you've got all of these, you've got the different orientation, is it or landscape, is it portrait? And you can target them through through this CSS breakpoint. So you've got all of these different different variations, as you can see. And the, you know, they've got all of the different phones. Now, obviously you don't need to do all of them and you don't need to go over the top. It's just a kind of finding a, a, a common middle ground that I think would suit you know a few different devices um, and just kind of plug in what ones that you think are going to work now for me it was more about going out so once you get past um, you know uh, maybe a 20 27 inch uh, not 27 inch once you get past like a 15 inch and you start to get on a 21 inch monitor or a 27 inch how does that look that's where I always find the designs always kind of they they blow out, they don't really look great. Um, and with Moon Ultra, that's what I did. I spent a lot of my time looking at um, looking at the, the larger screen sizes. So if I just pull up the Moon Ultra project here, um, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go into the settings, because this is where I imported all of my custom code, and we go into the custom code panel, um, and there's a there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now, as we start to go down, you'll just start to see at screen at max width two eight one, and then we've got inside of here we've got some targeted stuff here. Here we've got another we've got a landscape. So what we're saying this is for tablet, I presume seven six eight. Yep. To, so it's saying between seven six eight and and um, ten twenty four. We want that landscape uh, and there's something there's a few bits of CSS that I've targeted there and again we've got a portrait one I've just targeted them little bits as well inside and we have uh, a landscape mobile again with the CSS that I found from CSS tricks I found the, the, the kind of breakpoints, and you can alter these, don't forget. So you don't have to do this. You can change these to any kind of measurements or pixel widths that you want to kind of get in between. And all we're saying, again, just in between these two. So once you start targeting and you find in these, uh, and again, use that um, CSS tricks as a starting point to kind of find the ones that you want to use and the areas that you want to target. So this was obviously after I started doing some testing, on tablet and mobile, I was like, yeah, there's a, there's a few things that I just need to get because you don't get great control on the orientation of tablet. So that's where I brought in them extra bits of CSS to help me target that. And then the big one is obviously this one, which is just saying, you know, anything above 1800 pixels, target all of these. And as you can see, there's lots and lots going on. As you can see, I've, I've done lots of different little changes, um, and this was to help the design as it as it as it grew, as it got bigger, and it made the elements bigger to fill a bigger screen. And again, you can just change this. You can edit that key breakpoint, that that key breakpoint, and then you just edit them. So that would give you kind of a basis idea of what you need to do to get that to work. So if we just recap, use CSS. Um, tricks or there's you know there's lots of resources if you just type in CSS breakpoints you know have a little read up about them find out what they mean find out how you target between different ones and what I'll do is obviously include the link inside the video so you can go on CSS tricks you can start playing around with this um, and then you can just implement it in this to your project I would say probably put this in this section of the of the site um, obviously, if you're going to export the code, you'd, I would you know, include that in a CSS file and you know, do that as like a breakpoint CSS file. But how do, we, how, do we actually, how do we actually target this and how do we actually kind of work out what bits I need to change? Now, 
I'm on a 15 inch IMAX, so it's not going to really show you how that break point changes when you go out. But as a starting point, this is what I would do. So say for instance, we're on here and just imagine we're on a 20, uh, say we're on a 20, I don't know, 21 inch screen. Um, and I'm just going to kind of play around with this and I just need to take that off that quickly. Um, so we've got this image here. Say we're on, we're on a, when I originally did, when I went to like a 21 inch or 27 inch, this image in the middle was tiny. It was really small. So I was like, right, okay, so I need to set a, a break point. And once we get past the point, everything just increases in, in, in size a little bit. So we want to go into the you know, Google Dev tools and we want to inspect whatever elements that we want to change at certain break points. So I found the D product. I'm like, right, okay, I want to change that. And what you can do now is you can start to tweak live. So let's tweak live. So I'd be like, okay, I'll bring it bigger, bring it bigger. Boom, boom, boom. Get it to the size that I thought was right. Um, and then I would basically copy this class. I would go back into my Webflow project. I would find my breakpoint, which was that one. And as you can see, there is my D product, the one that I've selected. And that's the size that I actually increased it once it gets bigger than 1800 pixels. I would pop that in. I would open brackets, close brackets. I would go. You know, you can go back, back to your, um, back to your um, dev tools, and you just say, okay. Uh, so I increase that width. I'll just make sure I put that in there as well. So I'd go width, whatever you decided that it was, and and that's it. That is pretty much it. Save this, publish it, test it, make sure that this breakpoint is working. Um, obviously, when you create a um, break point the way that the break point works so if we was to copy this you have an open um, bracket and a closed bracket then anything inside of that again must have your class open bracket and closed bracket so basically this break point is is containing all of that css inside so if you don't kind of get that wrong maybe say for instance you delete that probably won't work, it won't come through, it won't pull through. You have to close this breakpoint and then you have to do your normal CSS. But what I'm saying is why it's quite easy that you don't really need to know CSS is because you use DevTools as your guide to be able to inspect the elements that you want to change, anything on the pages as you go through. You can just inspect, grab it. You know, we wanted to change the font size, and you just make sure that you make a change here, you make a change inside a web flow. And it's just about making sure you get the right breakpoints and then input in that CSS inside for it to work. And that's pretty much it. There's not much more to it. Um, I hope this has helped. Um, it's not as complex as you think it is. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you on the next one.